Six Recent Reasons to be Bullish on Tesla. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla Weekend. I've always been bullish, but there are reasons now to feel more bullish than ever, specifically six of them, and that has increased my confidence. And uh, let's take a look at them, because I think you'll agree. So here's the thing. Buckle up. We're going to get into it. But uh, after this ends, this premiere ends, we're going straight into a live stream, hopefully, and uh, we'll have more news and a Q&A session, and uh, I'll answer whatever you want to know. But that's going to be uh, different and difficult, and uh, let's have some fun. So here we go. Tesla Q2 earnings has been fantastic. And I was out of town when this dropped, but what a treat it was. Wall Street was expecting 94 cents uh, a share. Uh, I went a bit higher. I think I said a buck eight or a buck nine. And it came in at, uh, what was it, a buck 42? Where is it? It was absolutely bonkers. Stock didn't really respond to that, which I thought was very strange. They're saying, oh, well, it was baked in. This great news was baked in. That a 50% beat was baked in? All right. And the other big news is that even with the part shortage, even with the growth, even with having to pay a premium and do other stuff, they still managed to improve the automotive margins to 28%, which is industry leading, which is very bullish. If you look at this chart, this shows a bunch of automakers from recent years. Suzuki in 2019 got close to 28%. Uh, VW in 2020, 25%. That's fantastic. Tesla in 2020, 25.6, and now we're at 28%. So that is just a reason to celebrate. Uh, Biden's executive order, Morgan Stanley is very bullish on it. They're saying that uh, the transition is coming. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when it is inevitable. And there's going to be money in this, uh, in green energy. And Morgan Stanley is very, very strong on it. We believe by 2030, legacy OEMs will be very likely uh, will very likely have a materially smaller share of the global auto market, and that what they will be left with is likely to operate at a significantly lower margin than what they're achieving today, assuming there is any margin at all. <sighs> it's fantastic. As far as production and delivery and profit goes, these are all great signs. Tesla is profitable without um, the use of regulatory credits, even when you factor in Elon's very generous compensation plan. And I say generous, I think it's perfectly fair uh, for uh, everything that's been accomplished. Second reason to be super bullish, I think, and remember, this isn't financial advice, is the superchargers. Funny how people are now questioning why Tesla created their own proprietary charging connector and that it's not fair to other EVs. How about uh, no support for Elon when he was advancing the technology? Yeah, we created our own connector uh, as there was no standards. It's a fairly slim connector for high and low voltage. Um, that said, we're making our supercharger network open to other EVs later this year. Now, I was just sure that this would never happen. I made a video about it. Nobody uh, called me out on it, but that's all right. Uh, and why would they do that? Well, because supercharger network uh, will charge extra for slow charging uh, non-Tesla EVs. That is big. That means it's now going to be a profit center. Because if you've been to chargers, they typically look like this. They're not full. They're empty most of the time. They're underutilized. Now, on busy holiday weekends, they get congested, or at least they used to. Uh, with recent holidays and a lot of people doing road trips that haven't done them before, ever, or much, uh, you know, there weren't backups because... Tesla introduced off-peak pricing, giving people an incentive to go at night, early in the morning, and it just kind of worked. And if these chargers on a normal day can be generating cash, by all means, let's do it. Now, how much cash? Well, <laughs> Goldman Sachs believes uh, it could be pretty tremendous. They're pointing out 24% of public chargers in the U.S. by connector are Teslas, but 56% of the DC fast chargers are Teslas. Now, we're only talking about 25,000 ports, but that's only in the US. There are, uh, the Q crowd are very fond of saying, oh, that did have to make a kajillion dollars per charger. No, 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 it's global, my friend, it's global. How much revenue will Tesla make from supercharging? <sighs> Up to $25 billion a year. Now, I think that number is 
ambitious. Uh, I think it's overstated by an order of magnitude, but still two and a half billion a year would be pretty tremendous. And again, that accounts for everything globally. Now, why am I still bullish? Why, why should they do this at all? Why narrow the moat? Because Tesla opening supercharger network will enable access to new seven and a half billion EV funding in the US. Now, this is kind of fun because there's a big pile of money being set aside in the not very Tesla friendly uh, green jobs initiative, the infrastructure bill, I guess you should say, uh, where they are going to make funds available for those willing and able to build out charging infrastructure. And who is better positioned to capitalize on this than Tesla? So it'll be great because they're going to get paid to build something they want to build anyway, to something their customers will benefit from anyway, and it'll make even more capacity for rivals to be able to use the network. It's just a win-win-win. Now we get on to the Model Y, and this is where I am just giddy. So first of all, if you look here, Model Y estimated delivery October. All of August, September, October. We're sold out for the quarter on Model Y, and that's kind of a big deal. Uh, and then we get to Giga Texas, where Joe Tetmeyer got this inside scoop that they are about to produce their first test vehicles. Not saleable products, but running all the machines. The assembly robots have been in for a long time. We've already seen footage of them in operation. The stamping press was the first part of the factory built. Uh, this configuration car, this dummy here, was seen at the site recently. The paint shop's been there for ages. Everything is pretty much ready. Oh, and the final assembly uh, area, we saw leaked photos of that as well. Giga Texas is coming online. And Clean Technica, Tesla to make its first Texas built Model Y next week, one month ahead of Berlin. So that means in the next month or two, two months, we're going to have four different factories building the Model Y. If that don't make you bullish, I don't know what do. Except maybe that the Model Y is going to be coming even before that to the EU. Here we see in French, yeah, that it will be available in September. And here we see it also in German. They're not waiting for Giga Berlin to come online. They're just a moving forward. And that brings us to the next big bit of bullishness. Rumor, Tesla China already built first $25,000 compact EV prototype. I believe it. I believe it. There's a section of the, of the Giga Shanghai that I called the Sliver Wedge. And the Sliver Wedge was uh, the area with a concrete roof in the new section. Why a concrete roof? That's very heavy. What are they doing in there? Stamping? Casting? Both? I don't know, but it's not a design area. You don't put roofs like that in a design area. And it would make sense to not reveal it until it's ready to go, because uh, you risk Osborning your existing Model 3 and Y sales, mostly Model 3. Why would you get a, a $40,000 Model 3 when you could get a $25,000 Model Q? I don't know. What are we going to call it? That'd be a good poll to have. So that would be genuinely fantastic. And I do believe we will not see it until it is production ready. Model S, we got some great news here. This is in the configurator. And I do mean it's great news. The price has increased by 5000 as you can see. And the delivery is March or April. Meaning even with the $5,000 price hike on a car that should already be quite profitable, they're still sold out for the next two quarters, quarter and a half or two. That's fantastic news. Next bit of exciting news is full self-driving, which is now available as a subscription. And this 200 bucks a month allows consumers to dip their toes in the water, see if they like it. But more importantly, even if there's only a take rate of say 10%, 10% is 100,000 cars, 200 bucks. What is that? 20 million, 200 million? No, $20 million a month. That's straight to the bottom line. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. And last thing is AI Day. 
AI day, man. I was not excited before, and I am still looking for an invite. If anybody's got one or knows anyone who could get me one, I will fly down there. I will drive down there. I'll do what I must. I will be there. But I have not been invited. That would be cool. Uh, originally, I wasn't super excited, but Dennis Hong, who has worked with Tesla in the past and is apparently still doing so in some capacity, has um, made some posts on social media, both in English and Korean, which he has later deleted because they uh, apparently were uh, not, uh, not allowed to be public just yet. So there's something big coming, and I'm very excited to find out what. Um, I expect, though, that this is more bullish long term and will absolutely not move the price, just like Battery Day didn't and just like uh, Autonomy Day didn't. But this is super exciting. So, you know, what did I miss or misunderstand? Let me know in the comments below and be on the lookout for the live stream, which is going to start as soon as this guy ends. Q&A, more news, great stuff. You'll see. Subscribe if you haven't already. Give it a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't. I don't know. I'm just glad you're here either way. And you made it to the end. I mean, that's pretty cool. So awesome. Uh, stay tuned. Stay juicy. And I can't wait to hear from you clever robots in like a minute.